it's a shit case cinema. Oh dear, Star Crash, you are in for a treat. Now this is how bad Star Crash is. Forget Zardos, forget Grim Weekend, forget Troll 2, forget Camp Blood. In fact, speaking of Camp Blood, do you know who recommended this Star Crash film to me? Yeah, it's only one of the guys from Camp Blood 2. There. So because he recommended this film to me, he's not getting off lightly, hell no. So every time my brain starts to melt from watching this crap, he can jump in and assist me with a few words of wisdom on Star Crash. Like, about now. Hi, Shit Case Cinema. You're reviewing Star Crash. Thank you. This proves that there are worse movies out there than the ones I've been in. This is proof. Now, this is a movie that everyone really needs to see. I mean, planets explode and you can see little pieces of cardboard and and paper fly all over the place. The first set of actors, the first people that you see are playing, I think they're playing robots, I'm not really sure. I don't know if they're humans or robots. But one of them flubs their line right off the bat. That's worse than the movies I'm in. That is worse. You guys know this. Honestly, coming up with a short description of what Star Crash is actually about is impossible. I mean, the story, if you want to call it a story, is pretty much non-existent. It seems like random bullshit borrowing from various sources to make a low-budget cash-in. Now, it meets Stellar Star and Acton flying around in space. So, they come across a motionless craft and decide to investigate. It's motionless because before we're welcomed by Italian scrolling titles... Yeah, this is a low-budget Italian movie. We see a bunch of badly dressed goons flubbing their lines and reacting to red stuff, which I guess is killing them. But we have been unable to find the secret fortress of the enemy yet. Count Zartharn. We must stay alert. I tried watching this sober. It's a no-go. You need to be in challenging drug mode, or at least George Best drinking mode, to appreciate Star Crash for what it actually is. And what is it? Well, let's find out. So, Stella and Acton find a survivor on the ship but are quickly arrested by Robot Cop. Seriously, it's not Robocop, it's a robot cop. Apparently there's a difference. Now they do try to escape, I mean come on, give them some credit. Now I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking this, but he looks pretty happy to say that he's got a robot cop on his ass. What a goon! So the next time that we see Stella and Acton, they're being sentenced to hard labour. By a talking head. Just watch this and feel your IQ diminish. To 220 years hard labor in the prison planet of Seacom the Third. What? You don't believe that the universe is fucked up a star crash that there can't be a talking head that hands out long-term hard labor? You're having a laugh. Meanwhile, an evil emperor who I guess is meant to be a shitty version of Darth Vader on Ming the Merciless shows us some wicked acting here before summoning the best stop-motion robots to do his bidding. But his brain seems to be thoroughly damaged. He will be of no help to them to find the ship. Mm-hmm. I have a simple task for you. You must not fail me. Ooh, what an evil guy he is. This film rocks already, don't you think? So Stella and Acton's 220-year sentence compromises of dropping energy balls into holes in the ground. But surprise, surprise, Stella is fucked off after only 12 hours. Planning an escape? This is what you're going to get, lady. Yep, you get to witness the greatest cinematic battle ever made. Are you blown away? Isn't your heart about to jump out of your chest in excitement? Come on, people, this fucking rocks! I know, I'm not mental, it sucks, but that's what makes it cool. So Stella runs away, she's instantly outside, then in a cornfield, then on a beach. She sees a spaceship, so naturally enters it. Mmm, looking good. But anyway, the ship has the robot cop on it. Remember, not Robocop, a robot cop. And some weird bald guy. Then before you know it, they've teamed up and they're the best of buddies. Makes no sense. So, Stella, Acton, Robocop and Fucko are all together now. Look! Yeah, look, booze. Come on, you were looking as well. When crappy spaceship montages kill your brain cells, a shot like this gets everybody's attention. Alright? So, the Emperor appears before them, played by Christopher Plummer. Poor sad bastard of having to appear in this. So he talks a load of old bollocks and tells them basically that they have to search for the commander of the ship from the beginning. Now, guess who plays the commander? Go on, guess! Is it Sean Connery? No. Gary Busey? No. And you can keep on guessing because you will never get it because it's actually, in fact, David Hasselhoff. It's like, oh yeah, look out ladies, the Hoff is here. Just what this film needed. David Hasselhoff gives one of the best performances in the movie. This is one thing that gives me hope, though. Christopher Plummer. 
For some reason, Christopher Plummer is in this movie. I don't know what to say about that. Uh, Christopher Plummer is in this movie. So anyway, Stella and Robocop land on a planet with a really nice beach, see a crashed spaceship, which kind of looks a bit like that spaceship from Spaceballs, you know, the back end of it, Mega Maid. Now you won't believe this, but they're then ambushed by a giant Guardian robot. Doesn't it make you think of Jason and the Argonauts? Well, of course it does, because it's obviously ripping that film off. Guardian, take my revenge. Kill them. That's a Guardian, eh? A lame, stop-motion, slow, stupid, metal city boasting embarrassment to movie making. Man alive. My brain's starting to hurt, so let's have a few words of wisdom from Mr. Campblood 2, a.k.a. Mark Overholt. Was the giant robot scene on the beach meant to be intense and scary? Is that what the screenwriters were going for? Like they were going for, oh, audience members are just going to be glued to their seats and going, oh my god, how are, how are the heroes going to escape this gigantic, slow-moving, poorly made, clumsy, nice-figured for some reason, and metallic nipples, nice touch, uh, monster robot thing? I, I, I can only assume that the Joseph Campbell Foundation is seriously considering updating A Hero with a Thousand Faces, and they're going to re-release it with this material in there, this found material. Oh, I needed that. So, anyway, so before the robot attack, Robot Cock is killed by some sexy ladies, and just check out Stella's stellar acting here. Take your hands off of me! Let me go! <laughs> Bitchin'! Oh, no, but wait, Robocop isn't dead, so we're lucky enough to listen to him talk more garbage. Now, Acton really takes his role in this film way too seriously. I mean, he's so annoying. And this here is my favourite reaction of his when he shoots a few bad guys dead. Yeah! One more! There's one more! Fire the laser cannon, robot! Fire! Yeah! Ah! Actually, I should lay off Acton because everybody in this film is a joke. Not least of all Baldy the evil ultimate bad guy. Every line they deliver is just so cringeworthy, it's actually hilarious. My lord! Yes, Elric? A floating ship is about to crash into us! What? Zodan! Yes, my lord? Destroy the floating ship approaching us! Seriously, the power of Star Crash is amazing. It fools you into thinking it's the best film ever made. Now, there's so much to get through, but I just can't seriously take it. Let's speed things up a little bit. Did you know that the ship's computer is a giant glowing brain that talks? Did you know that Baldy turns out to be a bad guy? Then Stella and Robocop go to a planet which looks like it's covered in snow. Acton and Baldy fight, Acton seems invincible to gun rays and he wins the fight. Then Acton reveals that he can actually see into the future. Oh yeah, he's just been keeping this secret all this time. Then they're attacked by the special red effect from the beginning. Ah, my head. What's happening? Yeah, that's a bloody good question. So we've come this far, but what does Hasselhoff do exactly? Well, you see this guy shooting laser beams from his eyes? This is the Hoff wearing what looks like a mask from the greatest shit case film ever, Zardoz. This is an energy shield mask. It's a Zardoz mask, you anus. Now, Starcrash jumps into even more amazing territory with caveman battles, Acton using a lightsaber on the said cavemen. That's incredible. Plenty more acting from the bad dude, including his infectious laugh. <laughs> <laughs> More stop motion robots, which obviously suck, but this is Star Crash, so it's actually kick ass. And wow, how much eyeliner and mascara has the Hoff got on there? Come on, lad, this isn't Twilight. Acton dies and disappears, but whatever, who actually cares? And the movie staggers to its close with a lethargic space battle which is skull-crushingly boring in all its Z-grade glory. I mean, my effects here are just as realistic and in fact these are better. Oh shit, we're dead! So this is where the film gets its title from. Star Crash. Fourth dimensional attack. <laughs> Brilliant. So Robocop returns after being killed by the cavemen. Another space battle occurs and then the bad guy stands around shouting to himself as everything blows up. Everything blows up. Again. And again. <laughs> wow. Oh man, this film has got me torn. I mean, I don't know whether to give it a really crap 1 out of 10 or a really amazing 10 out of 10 because it's so bad it's awesome. Hmm, what would Zardoz do? Actually, what would the guy from Camp Blood 2 give it? Now, I would give Star Crash a 10 out of 10 rating. 
but this one needs a little extra push over the cliff. It's very special. It's maybe one more than 10. Some might say this movie goes to 11. It is the worst movie you will ever see in your life. Now, you're going to see a lot of bad movies in your life, and you're going to think, ugh, that, that was the worst movie I've ever seen. Well, that's why you should watch Star Crash every couple years, to remind yourself what an amazingly bad movie this is. You're going to love it. Ha, 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 ha!